Welcome to another episode of Releasing 100. I'm your host, Lisa McHale, and I'm here with my two friends, Shane Medina and Kathy from Ultra Darn Skincare. So Jane's going to explain how we ended up here today and how we all know one another. Jane? <laughs> so um, Kathy and I have been friends since we were like 13 years old, and um, we were talking about stuff one day and one of the things that came up is podcasts and recently I've been listening to a whole lot of podcasts including uh, releasing 100 and I was fascinated with kind of Lisa's um, ability to do this and so when Kathy was talking about you know getting you know pointers or best practices um, about how to do a podcast how to start I thought about Lisa and uh, we went we got on a zoom call was that maybe two weeks ago and uh, here we are. And then I listened to the bra <laughs> one, which I found, I'm like, oh, that is amazing. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that is a topic that we don't really, and I enjoyed it. It was a topic that I we listened to it three times. About. <laughs> Jane's like, listen to the bra one, listen to that one. <laughs> and Lisa, you sound amazing. It's very mm -hmm. professional. And, and I thought, yeah, this is, this is a good way to go. And um, with podcasts, it was, I guess this is a, a venture that we wanted to get into in expanding our brand. Well, thank you very much for the kudos. This was uh, really born out of wanting to spread the word about releasing weight and releasing the fundamental beliefs around why someone is holding weight and really to explain to people things that I'm going through, right? From the bra one, right? Like losing yeah. weight, what happens? And so I've been really fortunate, like, with having almost no acne my whole life. And so the biggest thing that's happening as I approach 50 is I'm noticing my skin is not bouncing back as quickly. And uh, you might've heard on our episode uh, with the baseball coach, he talked about losing weight and keeping it off. And yes, the skin is a thing. And so when you asked about the tips, I was like, hey, let's do a practice one and let's talk about your business. So. Yeah. Let's talk about your business a little bit and how you got there and what it is that you do, because uh, I do have a lot of questions relating to that. And I understand, Jane, you also use a product. So we're going to get oh, yes. some experience. <laughs> All right, Kathy? So I've been in the skincare industry since 1994. Um, got into it. I wasn't really planning. It just kind of fell into my lap. I wasn't planning to. Um, and I met an owner of a skincare product. I became a rep. And then over the years after that, I became a distributor. Um, I stayed a distributor for a very long time and took a hiatus for about three years in between, moved to Southeast Asia, moved to Indonesia to, I didn't even, as I said to you before, I said, I didn't even know where Indonesia was, which is really bad because my husband's Indonesian. That's why we ended up moving there. I said, okay, you know, I was ready for an adventure, did it. And while I was there, I did a lot of um, corporate training, uh, different programs. Um, some of my clients included L'Oreal, which was great because that was in my industry, uh, Nike, Bata Shoes, um, Mattel. So it was pretty cool because I got to see all the different types of industries, how they worked, how they operated. And then, um, and this was in, I, I lived there from like 1998 to 2000. 2000, 2001. And when I was there, um, after being introduced to um, the corporate life and came back to, to Canada, because during that time there was riots and um, Indonesia was going through uh, political turmoil. I said, okay, I'm done with all the, you know, um, the bomb scares and all of that. I said, okay, I'm ready to go home. Um, and I was pregnant with my first child. So I said, okay, I need my mom. <laughs> decided to come back um, because the owner of that skincare company he came down to Jakarta and he said you know are you guys done with your extended honeymoon do you want to come back I have this offer if you want to be distributor for Ontario in Canada you know it's open um, you guys have the first right of refusal if you want to take it it's yours so we jumped on it we became distributors from 2000 and one um, my husband stayed on until about 2017 ish um, but in between that, I was going back and forth and into like the training um, aspect and the facilitation part. In 2018, we founded um, our own skincare. So we started to go into a manufacturing role and founded our own skincare program in our whole line. That's how it started. Um, that's how we started off in 2018. 
And so I love your story. I love that, you know, you're sharing that you're risky. You went to Indonesia for like a period of time. And it's funny that you bring that up because I actually work with people in Haiti and I don't know if you've heard what's happening there. They're also having riots and uproar. Mm -hmm. And so they also have children. And so they're very happy that they moved their children out of there. Um, and I love that you just shared the story about, you know, being asked to come back to a role that you were proficient in, and then you actually took the reins of distribution. Um, really, really cool. So Jane, where did you fall into this timeline? Like, were you there 2018? Were you there prior to that when they were uh, when 20? started? Yeah? Yeah, even before. Even before, yeah. okay, so you've been- Yeah, even before. Here. For a long time. Your skin looks phenomenal. We've been, like, we've been like, friends since 1986. So, right? I think <laughs> I met you guys around that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least yeah. Kathy, I did around that time. I'm going to say maybe 1994, 95. Yeah, we're around totally that time. dating ourselves here on record. That's okay. Yeah, we're, um, we're in high school around. <laughs> we were in high school. And we're so, school. do you attribute, like everyone always says, your skin looks great. Nobody knows really how old you are. Do you attribute it to the skincare alone or are there other behaviors? I know Jane, you were saying you use the product. Why don't we start with you? Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't have the greatest skin kind of in high school, you know, I had the you know typical teenage blues, but, um, you know, I think I outgrew it and I had learned as I got older, um, especially I think when I turned 40 or just before I turned 40, I had all these issues with my skin. And I think it had to do with turning 40. And so that's when I took a real hard look. Um, and just before Kathy and I turned 40, uh, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I kind of changed my diet. We actually went on a 40th birthday trip. And then right after that, I did a detox. And I figured out what was causing all the little things that were um, causing me to break out. And I changed my diet. And, and I, I controlled it that way. I mean, when you're turning 40, I, I think your, your skin goes through a little bit of a change as well. And mm -hmm. kind of just listening to Kathy, I mean, I attend her seminars <laughs> for fun <laughs> and, you know, help her out in that way. I, I'm, you know, when she needs an extra set of hands, I kind of just, like I said, help her out. And that gives me the opportunity to listen to her speak about her products. One of the things is collagen and uh, cleansing properly and, and kind of all of the different layers of skin and how deep things go in the dermis and things like that. And so just being exposed to that, I kind of just learned a little bit more about my skin and, and understood a little bit more about how the products work and what works best. And, you know, I have my favorite products in her line and uh, those are kind of my go-tos, but I also like to experiment with you know, some of the, the newer things or the things that might not work for my skin and learn that, you know, they don't work for my skin just because, you know, I just want to try them out. Um, two questions. Sorry. Yeah. Two questions. Yeah, yeah. What did you cut out or change or what did you discover were causing the breakouts? And two, yeah. I've heard cleanser, serum, moisturizer are an absolute must. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Those are okay. expert Those are it. <laughs> So I'll talk about my personal space for the diet, diet, and then I'll give the, the skincare expert the, <laughs> that, that part. So for me, it was dairy and I'm lactose intolerant, but I love my yogurt in the morning. Every single day I would have my yogurt and my, you know, seeds and dried fruit on top. Every, that was my routine. I'm just a creature of habit. I just, it was easy, portable. I, when I was working in corporate, I had a fridge under my desk. And I worked awful hours and that was kind of my go-to. I remember turned the out, yogurt. <laughs> yeah, turned out yogurt's not my friend. What are you <laughs> having so, now? So what I'm having now, um, I, I, well, now um, like oat-based yogurt, coconut-based yogurt, it's not really yogurt. It gives the same sensation. It gives the same kind of feeling and satisfaction and taste. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, gives me that, that substitute. But that wasn't... Uh -huh. That yeah. wasn't available, you know, just say 10 or 15 years ago, but now it's readily available. So that's my go-to. Congratulations for figuring it <laughs> out. We always talk about like awareness, labeling, and, yeah. and then letting go. And even with yogurt, like go to what your habit, I love the fact that you even called mm -hmm. that, that it was portability. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We'll touch on what Jane is doing now. So portability and working, it, it is necessary. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit about that. However, second question, like what is essential for skincare? 
So you're correct. Buy it. So you're correct with regards to cleanse, serum, and moisturizer because it does fall into sort of a three-step program. You do need like clean skin. So your skin, in, in order for any types of products to really penetrate and do its job, the skin's got to be clean. It's it's just like anything. Otherwise, um, just like if you're painting a house, and, and I say that because we painted like this room, the room that I'm in blue, and it was yellow at one time. So you can't just go straight and, you know, start painting something. And, and when you're using products, you need the skin to be clean um, so the serums can penetrate. Serums are typically used to work in a deeper layer of the skin so that they're working to the lower levels, especially where your collagen, your elastin, your hyaluronic acid, where it's being produced, because the main component of the skin is collagen. And the changes that you start to see on the top layers of the skin is because of what's happening underneath. So it's sort of the same thing as like, you know, with, with dieting and the way that you're, you're consuming food is that whatever you're eating, right? Like it comes out later. So it's the same thing with, with skincare. So with collagen, that's the, the basis about 80% of the entire skin makeup is made of collagen. So it's important. That's why when you watch a lot of commercials that talk about, you know, collagen, collagen, elastin, collagen, it's because that's what the skin is made of. Um, I remember when you asked me to fill in the, the form before we started this, the, the Google's form, and you said, what's the one thing, you know, um, I wanted to say was that, you know, skin is about self-care. And it's because skin is the largest organ of the, the human body. And as we get older, or when we go through the different, you know, the weight loss, weight gain, you know, do I get compliments on my skin? Yes, partially because it's, it's products. It's also genetics, um, to be quite honest, as a Southeast Asian person, our genetics are different um, than Caucasian skin, than darker skin tones than that. And it has to do with the way that we retain moisture in the skin and how our skin is affected by pigments. So as we get older, like the three of us, before the wrinkles even start, I bet you, you would have seen, like if you're spending time out in the sun, you would have seen, and, and I've seen this with my mom, is um, like sunspots or dark spots. So we'll actually pigment first before you start to see the, the wrinkles. So let's talk um, about moisturizer and how that okay. relates like on top of the serum. And then you touched on a couple of things. So you're not okay. alone in, in in the psychology of why we eat and why we up and down with the with 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 our weight and that's kind of what this is right it's an honest documentation yeah. of the struggles with it so moisturizer and then um definitely want to touch on the up and down with the weight and what we're doing with that however the inner to outer beauty i think is yeah. a real connection to that and how that relates to career and sleeping and all of that kind of stuff because i know we all have different sleep cycles that's it i know jane and i do i'm not sure yet about i do i do let's talk about the moisturizer and then we can okay. go into like sleep so the moisture the moisturizer aspect it is important because it's what protects the top layers of the skin so when you're using a serum the serum is going down into the deeper layers of the skin and it's doing its job so it's doing its job it's it's feeding the skin it's helping the skin to rebuild because the skin itself goes through a cycle and that cycle is typically um, between 28 to 45 days, right? So as you're regenerating new skin, uh, skin cells, that's why if you're using an exfoliant, like a scrub, that helps to speed up how fast you rebuild the skin. And then that links to like why now there's so many different modalities that clinics do, like whether it's microneedling, microdermabrasion, all those different things are meant to speed up how fast we can make collagen, how, how our skin can do it. Because as we get older, we don't produce it as fast and the quality that we produce, it isn't as good. So we, we lose the quality, we lose the quantity, and then we start getting exposed to, you know, all the different elements in the, in, in the air, the environment and that. And then you start to notice that your skin is also very dehydrated. So the more dehydrated your skin is, then the more you start to see the wrinkles in that. So the moisturizer, what it does is it helps to lock in the moisture. So whatever you've done in the deeper layers, you're keeping that moisture in so that the top layers itself can start to um, have like that glow. And it also is topically hydrated. But where the changes really happen in your skin is what's inside. 
So that that's what it is. Creams, moisturizers give you comfort um, to the skin. And then when you start hearing about like skin type, um, how your skin produces oil, that's when you start to pick your creams. And creams can be, you know, as fancy as ingredients can get. Creams at the end of the day are very subjective to the texture and the feel of it, like on your own skin. Um, for myself, I'm, I'm not very oily. I'm actually pretty dry, um, like normal to dry, but I love heavy, heavy cream. <laughs> I don't need it. Like I don't, I don't really, really need it. My skin isn't thirsty in that, but I just love the feel of it. Um, <laughs> it, which, because it makes me feel good. Like, I feel like, you know, okay, I'm hydrated. Yeah. Um, but, but when it starts to change and you start to change your moisturizers when you're in different areas, for example, when you said you're going to Hawaii, um, you'll probably find that it's a lot more humid there. So climate plays like a role in terms of the texture of your cream. You probably won't want something heavy when you're there. And it's different that when you're in Toronto and you're in the middle of winter, you're going to want something really heavy on the skin to help you feel protected. Um, to feel like it's hydrated and to give you that comfort from when you're when you're going out and about. Um, for for men, for example, most men don't like wearing moisturizers, and the reason is because they tend to be more oily. At the same time, if they're working out as well, they tend to sweat more, so their glands become a bit more clogged, and then they become prone to acne and, and that. So they typically don't like wearing moisturizers, even though they should. Um, that's why we use our collagen. So most men will use our collagen because it, it comes in a gel form and we also have it in a serum form. So a liquid form, the gel form is beautiful because it's very lightweight. It penetrates and you, you feel facially naked, but not mm -hmm. in, in a it's sense. Giving you a thumbs up. She's like, yes, I like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so collagen has been really like our collagen actually won an award um, with Les Nouvelles Aesthetic magazine, which is um, a Canadian magazine. And it's it's a chapter from the, the French version of it. So from uh, Paris. So we want an award for our innovation with our collagen that has hyaluronic acid and vitamin C in it and in the way that it's able to function as a serum. So even though the gel, it's a gel format, but it is a serum because it goes to the deeper layers. That one works beautifully on the skin. And yeah, that's one of Jane's favorites. That's why she's nodding <laughs> and smiling. Yeah. So, so Jane, let's talk about what your regimen is. And I know that you actually do something to like reset almost it sounded like. And yeah, you know, I'd be interested to see how many people do that. I, you know, like I've heard of people changing the product names that they use. I've heard of people yeah. like shampoo and whatever yeah. else. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what you're using in her line and yeah. uh, what you do in your own regimen, if you will. Okay, so I have kind of two things that don't change. The cleanser, I use the gentle skin cleanser, which also when I used to wear makeup, when I used to go out, um, also acts as a, um, a makeup remover. So I can use it to take off eyeliner and all that, no water. And, and it's very um, gentle on the eyes, like doesn't sting anything. Even when you have like false lashes, you, you can use it to, to, to cleanse your eyes. So that, that's the constant, the, the gentle cleanser. Um, and also um, I use something called the Radiant Rice Exfoliant. And I love this thing. So I feel like I need um, extra exfoliant, which I, Kathy tells me I don't, but they have a cranberry, uh, which is a little bit more gritty and you can feel it when you are thing, really the, 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 yeah, the radiant rice one kind of just blends in. It's very, very gentle and mild. And, um, you can tell I've read all their product <laughs> manuals too. Um, so those are kind of the constants. And then where I make some changes, um, there's a product called calm rebalance that is an elastin based gel. When I'm, when I'm feeling like I have, you know, small breakouts or feeling like, um, uh, you know, have a zit coming, I kind of put that on and that kind of helps yeah. um, kind of bring down the inflammation. I use it as a spot thing, but sometimes I use it all over. So that's kind of my morning routine. And then at night, I can either change it up between the collagen, the award-winning collagen um, gel with hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. Um, and some days, because I am uh, I, I do have mature skin. I do use the serum. So I interchange the serums and the gels. And, you know, 
I have access to it in, in my um, in my cupboards. And um, yeah, the, the odd time I just change it up with, you know, the peptide serum and things like just to see kind of what feels best, but kind of the, the collagen gel and the, the serums are kind of my go-to. And then, um, you know, Kathy was talking about the moisturizer. So the moisturizer that I've always loved is like the thickest, heaviest, densest moisturizer. And I use it all year round. And Kathy was just like, don't you need something lighter for this? I'm like, no, I want the Hyaluron <laughs> Hyaluronic cream. And it's like thick. And then my daughters get into it because it's, you know, in, in, my, in my cupboard. And I always wonder why, you know, it goes down faster than, you know, I, I plan to use it. But yeah, I've got two adult daughters to um, do dig into my makeup. Uh, cupboard I'm beginning to, my I'm beginning cupboard. to get there I'm beginning to get <laughs> yeah. there 12 so yeah. when we were in London I think I had shared with you mm -hmm. another mutual vlog, friend of ours who's a makeup artist um had told me what to do with my skincare uh, mm -hmm. after I was finishing this other brand uh that was gifted to me and so that's how I know about that because prior to that it wasn't even like I was cleansing I was like in the shower yeah maybe <laughs> maybe some soap maybe yeah. the runoff from the shampoo and so yeah. thankfully, thank you for explaining, Kathy, why our skin as Asian women, you know, is a little bit more graceful to us as we age. Mm -hmm. so, so we were talking about Jane's skin routine. And my question is, as it pertains to releasing 100 from a numeric perspective, the up and down, Kathy mentioned already, has an impact. One of the key areas for me was right here. Like, and, and I, I get that it's age and I get mm -hmm. that it's, uh, losing the weight at a specific weight or too fast. So one of the products at the former clinic that I went to, they had like this mask and I've seen them pop up now online where it like lifts this and then hooks behind your ears. And then there's a neck one, you know, I would love to say oh, what is the real truth behind it? Cause look, marketing can tell you anything, Photoshop filters, this doesn't seem to be going away with any of the things that I'm trying or using. Let me say so, using. Uh -huh. it, like if you're looking at product, I'm going to tell you honestly, like product alone is not going to, it's not going to do product. What it will do is like, for example, if you're using like our firm rebalance, which is elastin base and it is like our ultra lifting gel um, places will use it. Like clinics will use it to augment neck treatments and, you know, it'll help with the texture. It'll help like with like a gentle lift, but to really change it, you would need some type of procedure. <laughs> I don't know about that mask that you're speaking. I'm like, hmm, that, that's it's a little bit more. There are some other treatments where they'll use, um, in the States, it's called Kybella, which is one of the, the treatments. I think oh, here yeah, it's called um, uh, Belchris or something. So they have a different spelling for it here. That one, I think they're using like radio frequency or what to help sort of do something that's not invasive. So if you're looking for something that's not invasive to do, I don't think it's cheap um, to do. And you do have to do like a couple of treatments for it. That might be an option. Um, we've also, I remember I used to deal with this microcurrent machine that would help with the lifting, but to keep it like permanently, you know, <laughs> It's a tough thing um, because it's skin and it's loose skin that, you know, especially like when you go through like the, the weight loss, like really fast, then the skin loosens a lot. Yeah. So you, kind of, you might need a nip and tuck. I'm not sure. You know, again, we, I, we were talking about this before we started recording and the big one is, you know, what are you willing to do? And I have people who are in this community of, you know, losing weight who are like, just get it off. I will deal with it in procedures. I have had friends who have done procedures, you know, again, maybe in time that will happen. However, I would like to, you know, slow down the weight loss to let the skin catch up. You know, I appreciate the honesty. Yeah. That's what I will say. So let's face it, anything here, you might have to do procedure, whatever that procedure might be. Look it up. I'm sure there are advancements happening all over the place. You know, when you first asked me, like, I think when we first um, did that Zoom call a couple of weeks ago, and you asked me, you said, you know, about Botox and that. So I, I get like, I look, I know where, where you're coming from, because I get asked by my own clients saying, you know, I can get rid of those wrinkles that you've got there, you know, like just a little bit, you know, a couple of uh, units of Botox, they'll get rid of it because it's almost permanent. I said, 
you know what, I'm going to do this as naturally as I can. And that's why I respect what you're doing, because for as long as I can, I'm not saying no, no is going to be my definite answer. But now it's like, no, that's not, not now. Where I'm, I'm, not now. I'm, not, yeah. I'm not there. Not and, there. But I think your skin looks good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's also the lighting, the sun is setting, you know, I've got like, it's good. Uh, I think I'm very grateful for my skin. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, I know though, as the weight comes off and I age, like you said, it doesn't, it's not as high quality collagen and it's not as fast and not as much. So mentally preparing, you know, mentally preparing what I might want to elect to do in the future. However, the biggest thing right now is the health, right? So like well, when you come it. back, when you come back, right, like I'll send you like some, call, like hook you up with products so you can try it for yourself. I appreciate so you that. know what it feels like. I think skin's really important to the way that you, you feel about yourself. One of the reasons why, like I stayed in the, the skincare industry for so long, and I'm not an esthetician, uh, like right off the bat, I'm not an esthetician. Um, I went to school, I was going to be a lawyer and then I went into business. And I, then I've just been immersed in the skincare industry and like for so many years. So that's where I've drawn like all my experience from that, like the exposure, everything's been that I just didn't bother getting like a diploma or anything for aesthetics. But um, where I was going with this is that skin is really important because it's the outer thing that people see and you're, it, it's on you. Like it's, it's just, it's there all the time. And a lot of times people who have problems with their skin, they don't feel good about themselves. Like it, it, it becomes a, a downer. And one of my beliefs is that when you feel good about yourself and you're comfortable in your own skin, then I find that you'll be productive. You'll help, you'll feel good and you'll help other people. You, you'll help other people feel good. Um, that's why when with the, with the pandemic, um, when the personal care services were shut down, it did play like a, you know, a psychological impact on a lot of people who used um, their time in the spa or getting treatments done to feel good about themselves, especially, and this is true of like people like with acne. It's one of the things like they don't want to, you know, they don't want to see people, they don't want to interact with people because, and a lot of times they don't want to look in the mirror because they don't like what they see. 100%. I think being around teenage girls in yeah. particular um, that are, you know, 11, 12, 13, starting the cycle of life. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am seeing how they are, they're, they're, I don't want to self esteem, I guess is the right yeah. word, but their self esteem and confidence is, is truly impacted by the condition of their skin. Of their skin. And of it starts, skin. yeah. I mean, so like some of the things is, you know, like with, with your daughters, what you'd want to start off with is cleanse, like clean the skin, practice cleaning the skin. A yeah. lot of times what they'll do is they'll just use the soap and nope, that's not doing it. That, that will actually dry out the skin even more. And she if there's steps right now, she's using a cleanser and a moisturizer yeah. and there was that's a good. toner. I think the toner ran out and I was like, you don't need the toner. You don't have any you know, right now you don't need it. So we, we are sticking with cleanser and moisturizer and then sunscreen. So those are the top three things I would yeah. say for, for us. Are we on the right track here? Like yeah. what are your girls doing, Jane? They're a little bit older. Than <laughs> so girls are playing with our products. <laughs> yeah, they're playing with our, with our products. Uh, and, you know, they like to experiment with kind of what the latest and greatest has are. They're TikTokers or on Instagram, you know, whatever the influencers are. They, they try to, um, you know, they, they like to experiment. Right. Um, again, they're 22 and 19. They both have totally different skin types. Um, but again, they've been blessed with, you know, you know, pretty decent skin and, um, you know, they grew out of all that, you know, the adolescent acne and things like that. Um, but as often as they experiment with kind of what the latest fat is, they always go back to El Chidur. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, it's that's always awesome. available that's it's always, always available always there yeah, yeah, yeah so jane let me hand over to you um mm -hmm. some decisions limiting beliefs where are you right now mm -hmm. in your career for you to be able to take off for a few weeks yeah I'm retired after a 29 career a 29 year career at um a major bank in canada i started as a student i you know, my last role was running an 
innovation program for 85,000 employees. Um, I've been in cybersecurity, I've been in risk, I've been an auditor, I've been in technology, I've kind of run the whole gambit. And um, I was given the opportunity to retire. And when you're 48, it's kind of just liberating. And I thought, you know what, I, I, I'm pretty conservative. I, I'd say, you know, working at the same bank for 29 years, um, it's been all I've known pretty much. Um, my dad worked there, my husband works there, my daughter's work, like it's, it's, it's family, right? And so it took about three weeks for me to decide that, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I can't even tell you, I'm so, I feel so free. <laughs> And um, yeah, one of the, I mean, it's COVID right now. So it's not like, you know, the first thing you, you want to do is travel. And so that's kind of delayed a little bit, but yeah, that, that's coming. But really, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do. And so I'm kind of taking pointers from Kathy, who, like I said, I've known since, you know, we've been best friends since we're 13. And wow, she's an entrepreneur. Like I've been in corporate all my life. And that's something that, it's always been in the back of my head, but, you know, I never took the risk, but now I have the opportunity to do it. And, you know, talking to my mentors, it's like, Jane, like, this is such a good opportunity for you. Why don't you take it? I'm like, hmm, yeah, it, it kind of made the, the decision a whole lot easier. And so I'm kind of just trying to figure out what I want to do. And the process by which if I can, I think, quote, Gary V, I'm, I'm a new Gary V. <laughs> listener I go on a lot of walks and he's who I listen to and I love the profanity I love all of that stuff so um that's Kathy Warren she's like he swears a lot I'm like hello (laughs) who are you talking to um but um you know I'm enjoying the process I mean it's only been a month but there's so much discovery involved and literally the world is my oyster and there's so many opportunities and like people like you Lisa who you know do all these fantastic things like I just observe and you know like I said I was covertly listening to your podcast I saw it on one of your stories on your Instagram or Facebook I'm like what is this podcast so I listened to all of them (laughs) I drove everywhere I drove everywhere I walked you know my late nights as you know um so I'm going through this whole discovery phase that um kind of I went through like a huge kind of mindset change, I think in 2019, I think this is kind of the next step to that. And so I'm just looking for the next adventure and I'm taking my time and enjoying the process as Gary would say. (laughs) I love it. Congratulations on making the decision. Like there's a lot of letting go there, right? Of like family, 29 years. First of all, you're telling people you're retired. You don't even look like you were dead. And then you tell people you're 48. It's kind of like, okay, this just yeah. doesn't matter. So skincare, do what you love, continue yeah. to love and grow, learn and grow. Um, I- I'm so happy for you. And Kathy, I mean, you got a sidekick that's ready to go. I got a, I got a <laughs> you know, sidekick. From, from, from testing sidekick. days to now, you know, yeah. I think so, so very lucky. I think support is such a huge thing that when you have support, you are willing to take the risks. And uh I think I shared with you, I'm in the middle of a leadership program, which is actually taking me back and forth and, and inspiring the travel again. So I do, I do look forward to you guys traveling too. So for me, I think there is a lot of mindset that happens with losing weight and taking risks and, you know, having to be honest about, you know what, I do care about my skin now that I'm older. Maybe when I was 13, I didn't care. And I, you know, maybe even until I was 20 or 30, however, mm-hmm. Now I'm noticing these things and I'm like, so happy. I got that something for that. Out. Thank yeah. you. Um, so Kathy, what about you? I heard in the beginning part of our, our session today that you had to go somewhere where you didn't really know. You had to like overcome this like almost coup type of behavior in an Indonesia to come back and then uh, starting on your own, right? Like, it's a yeah. process. You're still I mean, kind of in well, that she didn't speak period. the language either. So <laughs> she didn't speak the language. <laughs> I'm thinking about, you know, as you're asking the question about releasing, I'm like, what did I release? You know, I, and, and Jane will attest to this, that since I was young, I always said I was going to be a lawyer. I was going to be a lawyer. That's all I was going to do. In the middle of writing my LSAT, 
I said, F this, I'm not going to be a lawyer. I don't want to do this. <laughs> My parents, you know, like coming from like Filipino background, right? So Asian family mentality is either you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, um, like an engineer. Those were the main things. And I had always said I was going to be a lawyer and I had to break it to my parents. I said, no, I said, you know, I really love interacting with people. I love like the sales part. And, like e even to this day, like even as CEO of our company, I still go see my clients. And some people are asking, why are you going to go to the spot and see them? You don't have to, you have distributors. And I'm like, I know, but I just need to, to be there, right? And so I had to let go of that. I wasn't going to fulfill what my parents wanted me to do. And they were always, you know, they would tell their friends, yeah, she's going to law school. I'm like, no, I'm not. Um, and then two weeks after I got married, um, so my husband's Indonesian, <laughs> two weeks after I got married, moved to a country that I didn't know existed because I was so naive at the time. <laughs> I didn't know where Indonesia was, didn't speak the language. And back then there was no Google, there was no, it, there was nothing. So I had to actually take like an Indonesian, like a, a dictionary. Um, well, the, the positive side of like moving to Indonesia and why I got, you know, my husband bribed me to move there was that I was getting a maid and a driver. I was like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> but the, I love the, it. the thing he didn't say, the thing he didn't it. say was that, well, they don't speak English in Indonesia. So I went around with my dictionary, like a hard copy dictionary, and I would form sentences. Um, and it's a good thing it was an, an easy language to learn. And then I would start to form my sentences and I would pronounce it and say to her, this is what I want. And, and then I just started practicing. And it was because I had to talk to my maid and my driver, like where I wanted to go, what I needed to do, what groceries and, and things like that. So I was kind of like a housewife that only lasted for two months because I got bored. And that's why I ended up working um, because I, I just needed to be around people again. And I loved it, loved it, loved it, interacting with, with all those um, people. And then coming back, well, being there, going through all the, the civil unrest and the political unrest, um, I, was, I was at a client and it was in the American Express building and it's at least 50 something stories tall. And when they start sounding off the sirens and you can't use the elevators, and you got to make it all the way down, like with all these people. And, and you know, I, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. And it was scary. At one point, even um, uh, my husband's office at the time was near the, I think it was the Australian embassy, and they were throwing Molotov cocktails like around there. So their window like got hit in that. And we're like, okay, it's getting a little too real. So we decided to pack up and leave. And by the way, when we did move, I moved to Indonesia with four suitcases. <laughs> so two for me, two for my husband. We sold everything. We, we sold our townhouse, our car, all our possessions and all we, we moved. And we had to build from four suitcases. And then when we came back from Indonesia, it was like a cargo. I came back, I'm like, yeah, well, cause we had a house, we had all of this. I'm like, okay, they said, you know, $750 at the time filled an entire cargo with all your, your furniture and whatever and came back to Toronto um, and then built a distributor uh, distributorship. And from there, I, I guess I ended up becoming like an entrepreneur over and over again, like a serial entrepreneur, just like Gary V. And I love the process of building. So that's why this whole thing with going into the manufacturing side the first two, three years, we were really focused on learning the processes, doing all the things, working with our formulators, getting the branding right. Like, I'm so happy now. It took us three years to get our Pantone, like really decide on, on our color for our image and that. And I said, okay, now I can start focusing on the social aspect of it, of really putting the brand out there. So we were able to get, um, we've got three distributors across Canada. In, in the US, we function also as the distributor. So we have manufacturers reps there and we've got two distributors for France and then also Belgium as well. So we're expanding and our target goal is to, at the end of the day, is to expand into Southeast Asia and kind of go back there because I love being in Southeast Asia. Um, so that's, that's where we're going. I love it. Like that's the other part of personal professional development right is declaring a goal and mm -hmm. so there it's out there now that's what your goal it's is out there. that's my goal fast. let's see how fast it is and 
you know, I want to thank you both, Jane, one, for connecting us. And yes, being that anytime. Person. That's what it's I do. A long time. <laughs> it's a long time. And this is part of the process, right? You're going to discover what you do, what you love. Like, even as yes. a CEO, your role could definitely be um, being with people. Yeah. And somebody yeah. else can run ops. Like, it's... We actually did. So when they reopened for the personal care services, I went out on the road and we did this return of the beauty pros, which was my tribute to Star um, to Star Wars, it was okay. return of the beauty pros and welcoming back. We, we delivered like these welcome packages to them. And we said, and which was done, um, our flower arrangements were done by Jane's daughter. So she she's also a future entrepreneur and wanted to support that as well, right? <laughs> Um, and we, we gave them out to, to help them feel better about like, you know, welcome back to the industry that you can connect with people again. I mean, this, we're, we're all humans. So thoughtful, you know, I'm gonna wrap because it's been it's about so that nice. time. I want to thank you guys for okay. connecting. Thanks for thank you. Um, thank you. Connecting and, and Kathy for, for willing to take a shot, whether this goes live or not, um, that we answered a lot of questions and that. This takes the edge off like it just get out there gary v says it all the time just do it you know what i mean i would like, say you know let it go out. let it go out i'm okay with it I'm all like, right whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome so thanks again for joining another episode of releasing 100 thank you again to my guests jane and thank kathy you, you're very welcome you. so we're going to post up some of the stuff where you can find ultraderm and how to reach both of them in case you have any questions and uh we'll see you next time Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>